How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project, Jim here. Now for those of you that might be watching this channel for the first time, my wife and I bought 40 acres of land out in Southeast Arizona, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. When we bought it, it was just a bare piece of land, absolutely nothing out here. Since then, we've been working to become self-sufficient with our water needs, our energy needs, and food needs. <laughs> We're still working on a lot of these. Water's in the works, food's in the works, but one thing that we got set up now is our energy needs. There might be a lot of misconceptions out there. There might be a lot of doubters saying there's just things you just can't do on solar alone, but that's not absolutely not the case. We are approaching some of the hottest days out here. Let me give you a rundown of our system and how we're staying cool. A well-designed photovoltaic system can pretty much handle all of your needs. It really is a question of how much money you can put up front and how efficient you can be with that energy use. These are our panels. We have 15 320 watt LG panels that supply all of our energy needs. All right, this is the inner workings of our system. In full disclosure, I had helped designing and installing this system. Many thanks to our neighbor, Derek Hollett for coming out here and helping this out. I'm indebted to him forever for helping with this system. <laughs> and it is a beauty. It's also a beast. This system was designed to power almost three households. Well, trailers, not households, but <laughs> the power draw of like three living spaces. We have our charge controller, one of those, two inverters, and four Model S Tesla batteries giving us a total of 20 kilowatt hours worth of storage. Now, the reason why we have two inverters hooked up together is because of the potential draw when we had multiple people living out here. This allows us to draw quite a bit of power at once. So one of these inverters can handle about 3,000 running watts and about a 6,000 watt burst. With both of these running, we can pull up to 6,000 running watts, which could be a huge benefit, especially on hot days like today. This system can pretty much handle pretty much anything we throw at it. Definitely quite a bit of energy for us. Right now, you can hear behind me, the inverter is working, it's working hard. Let me show you what's going on. Right there, as you can see, the system is using over 2,000 watts at this current time. The batteries are also at 49.6, which means they are fully topped off. Right now we're pulling 2,000 watts and we're not even touching the batteries. The system is handling it just fine. We don't even have to dip into the batteries, but that is a lot of juice. And let me tell you why. So this is where we live. Fifth wheel. Not the most efficient thing. Not designed to be living in constantly. These are for road trips, stuff like that, but this is now our home, at least temporarily. <laughs> couple things that's incredibly inefficient and it's pulling so much energy. One, you can hear the hum now. That's our air conditioner. Two, the refrigerator. Let's go inside. Let's check these things out. Now what you're seeing here is our refrigerator, which probably elite pulls at least 400 watts continuously. Now we're able to run this RV fridge on electricity nonstop 24 hours a day. On the hottest parts of the day, now that we're getting closer to 100 degrees, we've been running the air conditioner, which I believe operates around 1600 watts continuously. So this trailer right now is pulling 2000 watts just between the air conditioner and the refrigerator. Now, both of these units are incredibly inefficient. RV fridges, they don't run the best on electricity. It's almost the opposite of a modern day refrigerator. It's convenient for us right now because it can also be operated on propane, which is a plus. Granted, if we got a regular refrigerator, we probably wouldn't have to worry about running the refrigerator on propane at all <laughs> with the efficiency they have. It has come in handy in the past. Also, these rooftop air conditioning units are not the most efficient either. It's running 1600 watts. It does the job, but it doesn't do it efficiently, as efficient as maybe a window unit could. These are things we might want to address at a later point. Of course, some of the things we're looking to do down the road is build a house that's more efficient here in the desert 
that we won't need to run air conditioning. That'll be a huge help. And ultimately, we'd like to get away from more intense power needs and really try and taper down. Really, we would like this to be the final system that we ever need. We don't want, it's already pretty robust and we wanna try and lower those energy needs. But even though we're approaching some of the hottest days here on the land, having this new rain roof installed has really been an absolute blessing. We probably wouldn't even be running the air conditioner in these hot June days now that we have the shade structure. Our main reason for running the air conditioner is because of our dog crew. In American Akita, they really don't do well in hot temperatures like this. When the temperature started getting warmer, he didn't really feel very well. So we kind of keep him inside. We run the air conditioning a lot more for his sake. All right, so this has just been a brief lowdown of the system we're using, of the inefficient way we're living right now. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. We'll do our best to try and answer those. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you on the next video.